no, no one could fake something like that. They'd have to be a very good 11 year old actor. Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you guys are ready for another video in our Spooky Week series. Now, if y'all did not watch yesterday's, you might wanna go and watch that first because yesterday's is kind of like a part one-ish to today's video. I mean, the, the situations or the cases are not connected, but the people that are involved in it, Ed and Lorraine Warren, are connected. And so you're gonna watch, wanna watch the other video, so go and check it out. So I'm not gonna jabber too much in the beginning of this video. I am just going to hop right in with talking about the movie, The Conjuring 2. Now we talked about this yesterday about how The Conjuring movies are all based on true stories. If you watch these movies to the end, it will show pictures of the real people. And they are really good movies, in my opinion. I mean, they're not just movies. They're more of like a movie documentary-ish because they are based on real life events. And the movie The Conjuring 2 was based on the infield haunting, which refers to the claim of poltergeist activity at 284 Green Street, a council house in Enfield, London between 1977 and 1979. Poltergeist is a German word for rumbling ghost or noisy spirit, which is a type of ghost or spirit that is responsible for physical disturbances such such as loud noises and objects being moved or destroyed. Now, again, if you watched yesterday's video, then y'all heard me talk about the fact that I don't really like to just throw around the words spirits or ghosts. I think of more of like demonic forces, entities, stuff like that. But in order to, you know, make things simple or easy for y'all to understand, I will use more terminology that's like, common that most people talk about, like the words ghost and now poltergeist. Now, when people talk about poltergeist, there is lots of documentation where poltergeist or these types of like noisy spirits or rumbling ghosts have had a history of actually making contact with humans. So like biting, hitting, scratching, throwing things, more like what I would describe as an aggressive demonic force or entity, not just a ghost that's shutting a door or sliding a quarter across the table, like actually a spirit that is reaching out and making contact with the human or natural realm. Foul smells are also associated with poltergeist. So like we were talking about in the video yesterday, the family that we talked about yesterday were saying what they believed that they were seeing was like ghost or like a little boy that was in the house, but they weren't having that foul smell until Bathsheba got involved. Traditionally, they're described as troublesome spirits who haunt a particular person instead of a general location. Poltergeist folklore is found in many cultures and early claims of poltergeist date all the way back to the first century. Now, some people believe that poltergeists are not real. Shocker, right? And we talked about that yesterday as well. And as much as I'm sure some of y'all watching this think it's fascinating of things that I believe in. I think it's fascinating for people that don't believe in anything else other than us. Humans, world, live, die, black afterwards, and that's it. I find that so fascinating that that's where it stops for some people. However, although there are a lot of people that do not believe in demonic spirits or poltergeist, 
they attribute a lot of the things that have been documented to have happened in the past to like children playing pranks, underground water putting stress on houses, earthquakes, and other natural causes. Some people though believe that poltergeists are real spirits creating alarming disturbances like in the infield haunting where the poltergeist activity centered on two sisters named Janet who was 11 years old at the time and Margaret who was 13 at the time. This brings us back to August of 1977. Now I want y'all to put y'all selves in the mother of these two girls position. Her name was Peggy and she was a single mother. On this day in August of 1977 Peggy was downstairs when she heard a loud crash coming from upstairs near the bedroom where the girls were. She rushed upstairs to see what was going on and when she went into the room she found her two daughters crouched in a corner shaking and hiding. Peggy immediately thought that her kids were up to mischief. The girls started trying to explain to their mother that there was something in the room with them. The Peggy is trying to get them to calm down and quit playing and this is when the dresser that was in the room slid all the way across the floor into the door. And my mum came into the room and she said, Johnny and Janet, pack it up and sleep. We gotta get up in the morning. And the chest of drawers near the wall and the door had slid into sort of the doorway. And not long after, the three of them began to hear knocking all around the house, just knocking, coming from every which direction. So Peggy did what any normal person would do, and she called the police. She called the police to come there and check her house. Like imagine, imagine making that phone call. It's about like that teenager calling 911 saying he had aliens in his backyard. I mean, truly, what do you do in that situation? She called the police. When Peggy called them, she told them that she had multiple witnesses that saw a chair in her house rise up off the floor about three or four inches, slide over three to four feet, and then stop. Can you imagine? This is back in the 1970s, okay? The chairs are lifting up and they're moving on their own. So the police come out to her house to take a look for themselves. And you can imagine the conversation between the two cops on the ride over there. Yep, we got another crazy one. Yep, got another mama drinking, you know, whatever. She's smoking that good stuff, something. So the cops come into the house and they meet Peggy face to face. And this is when they realize, well, she's not drunk. Let us go inside and see this chair moving and see what she's talking about. You can only imagine these officers surprise when they went into the home and witnessed a chair moving by itself with their own eyes. It um, came off the floor or nearly a half inch, I should say and I saw it slide off to the right, about three and a half to four feet before it came to rest. Um, I checked to see whether or not it could possibly have slid along the floor. I placed a marble on the floor to see whether or not the marble would um, go in the same direction as the chair did, and it didn't, it didn't roll at all. Um, I checked for wires under the cushion of the chair and I could find no explanation at all. The interesting thing about this case or what some people call this haunting is that there is so much documentation of all kinds of people, cops, investigators, and Lorraine Warren, all, all types of people that went into this home and saw with their own eyes stuff happening over a period of 18 months 30 different people including the neighbors paranormal investigators like ed and lorraine warren and journalists said they all saw heavy furniture moving on its own they said they saw objects being thrown across the room the next door neighbors peggy and vic nottingham we've been sitting listening to the knocking and uh, the woman next door she called me in I, we couldn't make out what it was. I heard the knocking as I walked in the front door, but we, I went all over the house, checked it, checked the walls, checked everything. Just couldn't make out what it was. So in the end, I thought, myself, well, there's only one thing, I'll call the police. And they seen the sisters levitate. Yes, the two girls, 11 and 13 years old, levitate out of their beds and off of the ground. Graham Morris, a photographer for the Daily Mirror, visited the house because there was so much talk about it in the town. And when he got there, he said it was complete 
chaos. There was things flying across the room, people were screaming, and he himself got hit by a flying Lego. Many of these people also heard and recorded knocking noises coming from all around the home, as well as Janet, one of the daughters, seemingly speaking or a male's voice coming from her little body. Say Dr. Bellock. Come on, let me hear you say that. Come on, let's hear you say Dr. Bellock. Dr. Bellock. Right, that's good. Come on, Shut up, Dr. Bellock. I'm 72 years old. I come from doing right, great job. And I have right here to judge. Now how do we, how can we shoot you if we can't see you, Bill? What man to God? Sorry, I didn't hear that, Bill. What man to God? By praying to God. So, what you're saying is we can't get rid of you by praying to God. Yes. When they were asked, where did this sound come from? The, the, per, the people that would ask would say, did it come from your throat, from your stomach? Both of the girls said that the sound or the feeling came from the back of the neck. So almost like something was speaking through them through the back of the neck. One of the sisters said that when she looked at her other sister, when she would hear this raspy male voice coming from her sister, her mouth would not even be moving. But I used to live here. And I will tell you the wrong. And if you don't get anyone else, the set is true and Mr. Blackman. I want you to tell me whether you remember what happened to you when you died. Days before I died, I did. I went blind. Then I had an ambush and I fell asleep and I died in a chair in the corner downstairs. Well, a former occupant that had lived in that house years earlier named Bill Wilkins died in that exact same way. And Janet would later go on to say that the man that was using her voice, his name was Bill. In 1978, Ed and Lorraine Warren came to the house to investigate. Their involvement wasn't as extensive as it was in the movie, but the Warrens did conclude that it was an authentic haunting. Ed would even later go on to say, now you couldn't record the dangerous, threatening atmosphere inside that little house, but you could film the levitations, teleportations, and demiratilizations of people and objects that were happening there. Not to mention the many hundreds of hours of tape recordings made of these spirit voices speaking out loud in the rooms. Society for Physical Research members Maurice Gross and Guy Playfair investigated the haunting and reported curious whistling and barking noises coming from Janet's general direction. Now, although Guy Playfair maintained that the paranormal activity was genuine and wrote in his later book that the entity was to blame for the infill disturbances, he often doubted the girl's truthfulness and wondered if they were playing tricks and exaggerating. Still, both investigators, even though they believed that some of the activity in the house may be faked by the girls, they definitely believed that there was, you know, genuine paranormal stuff going on in the house. And I don't understand that. What you think these girls, like there, there's a, a, a demonic and aggressive spirit in the house. That's like throwing them across the room and levitating them. And they just decide they're going to join in on the fun. Like, Oh, we're going to get in on this and have a little laugh. See, I, I don't think so. I understand it's hard for some people to wrap their minds around. They're like, okay, Maybe a quarter slid on its own and maybe a chair levitated three or four inches and maybe a couple feet. Okay, so what? Big whoop. But there ain't no way in heck 
that a demon is speaking through a girl. So let's talk about the skepticism, okay? A video camera in an adjoining room allegedly caught Janet bending spoons and attempting to bend an iron bar. Now there were a lot of people that were skeptic again of Janet and thought that the girls were just making this type of thing up. However, it's hard to think that they could fool that many people. I mean, how, how does it explain moving actual dressers across the floor or chairs in front of the police? I mean, these kids, I, I understand that there are people that want to explain away everything, right? Like there's an answer for everything, but there's not always an answer for everything. Now, there's a lot of skepticism out there about this. However, lots of tape recordings were made of Janet, and there's a lot of people that believe that there is no way a little girl could have done this herself. <laughs> The family said that the hauntings slowly went away by 1979. However, the family says that they do still experience strange things sometimes, like odd noises, but nothing extreme like happened in that house. Janet, who experienced most of the hauntings, still to this day says that she doesn't care what other people think. She knows what she experienced and saw was real. It was all in a terrible state, very scared and tired of it. And it got worse as the time went on. We got more exhausted with it. <laughs> no, no one could fake something like that. They'd have to be a very good 11 year old actor. And a lot of people have pointed out that Peggy, the mother, had nothing to gain from this. As a matter of fact, she had everything to lose. Imagine how much time was wasted or wrapped up, wasted, or wrapped up in having people come into her home. She never got a single dime or dollar for any of the press, any of the books that pe other people wrote, or any of the media coming in and taking pictures. She never gained anything from it, so she would have no reason to make it up or lie. And it seems like if her two daughters were faking this, which, no, I, I just can't believe that they could have faked everything, right? If they were faking this, she would have figured it out at some point. I don't know about y'all, but these kids think they're sneaky. How sneaky and impressive do you gotta be to make a chair levitate by yourself in front of the police? And get this, just to take the creepiness up a notch, Peggy the mother died in 2003 in the same exact chair that Bill Wilkins died in. What? Why they still had that chair in that house, I don't know. Now, weird things was happening while they was filming this movie too. The cast was going through it. Even a publicist for this film said that he had been receiving reports of weird occurrences on set. There were reports of drilling happening below the stage when nobody was down there, along with unexplained hammering sounds. The film's photographer, who also worked on the Insidious movies, visited the set one day and said that while he was on set, his horrifying pictures from his other movies just popped up on his iPad. He was just like, just all these creepy photos just started popping up. And what makes that even more weird is the fact that he had never had these creepy photos from the other movies that he did on his iPad before. And he could not delete them. So it's not like he was out there with his iPad as a photographer taking pictures of other creepy movie sets, no. When he got onto the set for the infield haunting, he pulled out his iPad and all of these horrific photos start popping up out of nowhere. And he couldn't delete them. What? And there were other creepy things that happened. Like a, a publicist said that a Warner Brothers security guard, so an actual security guard that worked on these sets, said that this stage four he believed was haunted and other people believed as well too haunted because of these like demonic scenes or these reenactments of things that had happened that they used this stage for which reminds me of the old school exorcism in the cast do y'all remember that some of y'all are too young to remember it we'll just hang in there because i want to do a video telling y'all about what happened to the cast if you've ever seen the movie and you have any kind of like spiritual faith in like God or Jesus, you might understand why, because I mean, that movie was 
horrifying. I mean, people were vomiting in the movie theaters profusely going to see this movie, The Exorcist, way back in the day. They were just, ugh, I mean, it was wild. But that is the infield haunting. Now, again, the family and the two girls that are still alive, are they still say all of that really did happen. And you guys, the, the thing of hauntings is as old as time. I mean, again, no matter what you want to call it, you want to call it ghosts, you want to call it hauntings. I call it demonic entities, you know, like demons that roam the earth. The Bible speaks about it. But I mean, this would be a pretty crazy lie to keep up all of these years when the family did not get anything from it. What do you guys think? Have y'all heard about this? Have you seen the movie? Did you know about the, the girls that are the women that have spoken out since then? Weird. Y'all let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here. And I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.